Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, the first um, actual skeletal system bones we're going to memorize, and that is um, your axial skeleton. So these notes are your axial skeleton. I think the first slide that you have is basically a skull. I'm going to go to the next slide. <clears throat> so your axial skeleton... Um, and you don't have to write this in your notes. Um, it basically includes your skull, your vertebra, and your bony thorax. So that's your ribs. Okay, so your skull, your spine, and your ribs. Um, that's basically everything that's in the middle of you. Uh, so next slide. Uh, this is just a quick picture of your axial skeleton in green. There, your skull, your vertebra, um, also, you have right here, down here, your sacrum, which is part of your vertebra, and your rib cage, which includes your sternum. Okay, next slide. So, you might want to just write at the top of your first notes there, and maybe I'll write them in when I get there. Let's do that. Oh, yes, so there's one more slide. Um, your skull, the, mo the top of your axial skeleton, has two actual two sets of bones your cranium and your facial bones are separate and your bones are joined by sutures which are a kind of joint okay this is a kind of joint a joint so that doesn't have synovial fluid about it um, and um, <clears throat> they're fused so they don't move but it is considered a joint Okay, um, only the mandible is attached by a freely movable joint. Okay, so next slide. And here's the first slide that you have. And unfortunately, yours is in black and white. It's not beautiful and colored like this, so it makes it a little challenging. But we'll have several of them in your um, color and plates um, in order to um, get the idea of the different bones, okay? Uh, so this is your skull, and you can essentially uh, fill these in. I'm going to just run through it here. This suture right here that the stylus is doing is the coronal suture, okay? Uh, this bone in the front of your head is your frontal bone. This bone, and there's actually two of them, so when you write that in, write times two. You that. It's hard to see that too, but the parietal bone, you have two of them. There's actually another suture that I want you to write in, and that's the suture that I'm going to sort of draw it. It's a little bit funky. It's going to run right down the middle here, okay? And that suture is called your sagittal suture. Okay, so you have two parietal bones separated by the sagittal suture. Your frontal bone, there's one of, and it's connected to your two parietal bones via the coronal suture, the coronal suture. You have two temporal bones on either side of your head, right? So you have two of those, so that's also times two. Um, <clears throat> and your... Uh, parietal bone is separated from your temporal bone by this suture called the squamous suture. Um, and then in the back of your head, down here, you have your occipital bone. And your occipital bone, there's only one of those. And it is separated from the temporal, I'm sorry, from the parietal bones by this suture here, which is called the lamb, lambdoid suture. All right. Um, <clears throat> those are the bones of your skull. You have these processes too. Remember we talked about uh, processes or projections. Uh, and so, um, let's see, what do we have? We have the zygomatic process here. And this is strange. The zygomatic process is part of the temporal bone of, so we're going to write of the temporal bone. All right, of the temporal bone, because you also have a zygomatic bone, which is in front, it's a facial bone, and it's in front of the temporal bone, and it connects to the zygomatic process, but the zygomatic process is actually uh, part of the temporal bone. 
you have your external auditory meatus. Um, this is your ear bone. This is the hole where your where you, your sound comes out of your ear. You have the mastoid process, which is where most of your large mastication muscles for chewing attach to this part of your bone here. And you have the styloid process. I like to think of it as the styly one because it's a little pointy. Styloid process. And that also attaches um, muscles to your mandible uh, for <clears throat> chewing. Okay, and this big red bone here is called your mandible. This is the whole mandible. And this part of the mandible is the mandibular ramus. Um, you have a little hole, so right, this, this, is, this body here, mandible, is pointing to all of the red, all of the mandible. This hole right here is a hole where you have nerves that come out to support your lower face. Uh, your chin, right, so the reason that you can feel everything under your chin is because the nerves that come out from under your brain, they actually come from your brain under here and out here onto your face, and that's called the mental foramen. I don't know why it's called mental. Um, <clears throat> we're, we have margins where your teeth attach to your jaw, and those are called alveolar margins. Your maxilla is your upper jaw, so that's the one in purple here. So these are facial bones, right? Your zygomatic bone here um, goes around your eye, and it's basically your cheekbone. You have your nasal bone, and there are actually two of those. So you have, okay, let's see. <clears throat> um, uh, zygomatic bone, there are two of. Nasal bone, there are two of. Lacrimal bone, there are two of. Lacrimal. Lacrimal is the one right behind your maxilla, and it's, there's a, um, a, a crease in there where your tear ducts come through. So that's why it's called lacrimal, because in Spanish, lagrimas are tears. And so think of that as your tear bone, the lacrimal bone, and it's right behind the maxilla. Behind the lacrimal bone is what you can see here is this, this tiny part of what the ethmoid bone is. And the ethmoid is actually a big bone that sits under your skull in here, and we'll see it when we tip the head upside down. But this is what you see from the side of your, if you look at a skull from the side, this is just this part of the ethmoid bone. Uh, same thing with this sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone, you see the side here next to your temporal bone, and it's also a very big bone that sits <clears throat> um, in the upper side of, uh, underside of your head, and, and your skull sits, your brain sits on it, actually. Well, does it sit on it? Yeah, no, your brain sits on it. Um, okay, so that's that one. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, here's a picture of the front of your skull. Okay, so uh, here's your frontal bone again. Here's your coronal suture again. The sagittal, you can't see. It's back there, right? Parietal bone is this green one here. Uh, here's your nasal bone. You can see now that there are two of them, right? So that they're sutured right here. Uh, you actually have two maxillary bones. So you have two maxilla. So the maxilla is also times two. You have one mandible here. And then the zygomatic bone is this one in front here. Um, let's see. Here's more. So the sphenoid bone you saw on the outside there, and then you're seeing the bulk of it in here. Again, we're going to get a better picture when you turn your skull upside down. Um, other things that weren't on the previous slide, uh, the middle nasal concha, and that's this red thing right here. So this is where it leads to your sinuses. And this is part of your ethmoid bone. So it's colored red, just like your ethmoid bone in here. Okay. And then you, so that, then you have an inferior, so there's a middle one and there's an inferior. And remember, a concha is a, like a, um, I don't know, it's like a spine almost. The inferior nasal concha, okay, and that is right here. And I'm trying to see if that's its own bone, I can't remember. Mm, oh wait, no, that's this, the inferior nasal concha back there. And then you have this bone right here, the vomer, is its own bone. It's a really small bone, and it just sits right there. Uh, here's your alveolar margins again. Okay, so finish that up, and then I'm going to go on to the next slide. 
Okay, this is basically now uh, we've sliced your head in a um, transverse slice, so to into top and bottom, okay, above the jaw. So we're, uh, no, yeah, and we're looking down now into this is where your brain sits on your jaw, okay? So uh, this hole right here is called the foramen magnum. And that's where your spinal cord goes in. So if you go down through that space, you're going down into your spinal cord, okay? Um, underneath all of this would be your jaw, and that's not shown in this picture, okay? So this is basically what your brain sits on in your head. So we're looking down into the inside base of your skull, all right? So now you can see the whole sphenoid bone here. They call it the butterfly bone because of this cool uh, butterfly shape of the sphenoid bone and it actually so you can see part of it out here you can see front of it if you see the skull from there's actually that part where you can see it through your nasal cavity right but that's the underside of the sphenoid bone now you're seeing how big it is um, the cella tersica here is um, um, basically where your pituitary gland sits so it houses the pituitary pituitary gland, which is an important gland when we study your nervous system. We'll learn about the pituitary gland. You probably know what it is, but your pituitary gland sits um, right in that little case right there. It's really important, so it has its very own special bed in your brain, and it's called the cella tersica. Uh, this foramen oval is for um, nerves and blood vessels. I can't remember which ones. Uh, this one here, right here, between your um, temporal. This is your temporal, and right. Oh no, and this is your parietal. So temporal bone in orange, parietal bone in green. So between your temporal bone and your occipital bone, so see your occipital bone is actually pretty big too in the base of your skull. There's this jugular foramen, and of course your jugular vein comes through there. So we get, I don't know if you need to, the jugular, jugular vein comes through there. Um, <clears throat> the, the foramen magnum, of course, is where your spinal cord comes in, spinal cord comes into your brain, spinal cord. Um, there's your occipital bone again in the brown, the parietal bones out here. Okay, up here at the top. So your frontal bone, this is the base of your frontal bone. And then we have <clears throat> your ethmoid bone. So your ethmoid sits here in the center. Um, there is a, this thing, or the Christigalli, the name right here, is this little, um, crest right here, and it's called the coxcomb, so um, it's like the coxcomb, and you have this cribiform plate, and you have a whole bunch of, um, this is where your um, smelling nerves come in, so this is, uh, you have a lot of um, nasal nerves, and I think the video is going to explain, the video I'm going to show you at the end is, will explain this better, so your sense of smell so sensory nerves uh, come in through that crib, cribiform plate, sensory nerves. Uh, what do they call those? Olfactory. Let me cross that out. Uh, oops. Oh, it's not going to let me write. Sorry, I'm going to cross it out. I'm going to write olfactory because that's really what it's called. Olfactory. So your sense of smell. Olfactory nerves. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is now turning your skull, looking upwards from the base of your skull, right? So here, right here, this is your foramen magnum. So now we're looking into the bottom of your jaw. You can see here's your maxilla right here, right? Your foramen magnum was where your, this, so we're looking into where your brain goes. Uh, this occipital condyle, this condyle, these two things right here are uh, essentially where your brain, where your skull sits on your spinal cord, okay? So your skull 
sits on your um, the first vertebra, your C1. Uh, but we'll call it just the spinal. Uh, what do we? Your spine. Your vertebra. Vertebra. Your spinal column. I should have called it. Okay. Um, here's that jugular foramen again. This is from the underside. We saw it from the inside before, right? Uh, the carotid canal, right? Your carotid artery. So your jugular vein, your uh, your uh, carotid artery. Do we need to write that in there? Carotid artery comes through there. Uh, I still am going to have to look up foramen ovale if I need to. The sphenoid bone, this is the bottom of your sphenoid bone. There's your maxilla. Here's your maxilla. Okay, you have another small bone. Your hard palate, right? This is your upper, not the part that moves. Uh, this is called your palatine bone, and it sits behind there. If you actually... Um, <clears throat> move, if you stick your thumb into your mouth and and touch the very back of your upper uh, jaw, you're touching the palatine bone. <clears throat> um, here, here, let's see, so there's your zygomatic bone a little. Here's the zygomatic process of your temporal bone again. Here's your vomer, right, the vomer that comes um, into your nasal cavity, so it comes out your nose, so you see it in your nose, but this is the bottom of it. Um, this mandibular fossa right here, so that's a dent. This fossa is a, an indentation, and this is where your mandible, uh, the ramus, sets into the, um, into your temporal bone, okay? This is where the mandible articulates, articulates, uh, I have to write it down here, with the temporal bone. Temporal, that, that says temporal, even though you can't tell it, because the stupid stylus. <clears throat> Excuse me, okay. Uh, here again is your styli, styli, styloid process. Uh, here's your uh, mastoid process down here. That's where you have these jaws, these uh, muscles attaching that help move your mandible. So your maxilla doesn't move. Your mandible does all the movement. And these two places are where those muscles attach, okay? Your parietal bone down here. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> uh, okay, paranasal sinuses. So you have holes. Sinuses, remember, are holes. Uh, they're big spaces. So you have a giant space. Uh, you, these are your paranasal, so in your nasal cavity, right, these are your sinuses. This is where you get a headache, you, right? You have one up here in the bone. It's actually in the frontal bone. Do you see it? So it's called the frontal sinus. So it's a gap in your frontal bone, a hole in your frontal bone. Uh, your ethmoid bone also has uh, holes in it. Your sphenoid bone has a big hole in it where you, there's fluid uh, for your sinuses, uh, your maxillary sinus is in there. Uh, that's that. So these are your sinuses, frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, and maxillary. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> oh, look at there. So the functions of your paranasal sinuses, they lighten your skull. So they're right, you take out some of the bones so it's not so heavy. They also are gaps that, because they're uh, empty, they give resonance and amplification to your voice. Kind of cool. Uh, which is why you sound nasally, more nasally, uh, when you're sick. Okay, your hyoid bone, this is a super cool bone. <clears throat> this bone sits, uh, you actually can't feel it. It looks like it sits way in the bottom of your throat, uh, but it doesn't. It actually sits just under your jaw, under your mandible, and it houses your tongue. So your tongue sits on it. But it doesn't actually articulate, so it doesn't, it doesn't have a joint or some place. It's attached with muscles, right? But it doesn't, ha doesn't have any joints where it, it articulates with another bone. It just sits there. And it sits, we'll look at it in the skeleton, it sits under your jaw, and it's basically it's a movable base for your tongue. It is attached by uh, muscles and such, but 
um, it doesn't actually move against any other bone. So it's the only bone in your body that does not articulate with another bone. Okay, next slide. Okay, developmental aspects. So um, when you are born, uh, your bones are, um, when they say incomplete, they basically mean uh, not sutured. So they're not fused. They are not fused. So they're literally all separate bones, still not fused together. They're joined, they are jo joined by these things called fontanelles, which is just a, is fibrous connective tissue, right? And the, that's like the, the soft spot in a baby's head. That's what the fontanelles are. And there's several of them, but the, the soft spot, right? So there's several, but really the soft spot on the top of a baby's head, that's what that is. And we'll see it in the picture. You probably do see it in the picture. Um, so these are filled in with bone. They're calcified or ossified by about the time you're two years old. Okay, next slide. Here are, <clears throat> here are the pictures. Um, so <clears throat> the fetal skull is large compared to the infant's total body length um, because of the development of the brain. Um, but that way that it gets out of the mother's body is because uh, they're not sutured. And so they kind of get to squish on the way out. Uh, this anterior fontanelle right here is the soft spot. What we call the soft spot of the baby's head. So you can definitely see there's, oh, the two frontal bones. I guess there's two frontal bones. Two parietal bones, one occipital bone. Here's the temporal bones. Okay, here's the sphenoid. Uh, the... Wait, this one's the sphenoid. This is a sphenoid. This is a zygomatic. Here's a maxilla. There's a nasal bone. Right? You can see them all in there. Mastoid fontanelle. Okay, you don't need to know any of these terms. Just know that all of the bones are separate when you're born, <clears throat> and then they fuse together eventually. Okay, next slide. Uh, okay, so the fontanelles, so fibrous membranes, they um, allow space, right? So they're going to get bigger as they grow and they're going to fuse together so they allow the brain to grow and then 24 months two years after birth they um, fill in okay and that is it for the skull so that's it for tonight uh, we'll work in our color plates tomorrow morning thank you good night